All right, I wanted to introduce you guys to a simple tool that allows you to sort of explore and under, better understand Bode plots. And it's a tool within MATLAB that looks like this. Now, it's not built into MATLAB. So what we've done is we've uh, uploaded the files into a zip file on Canvas. And we'll send you a link to that when we send the announcement for the, for the location of this. Um, but what you'll do is you'll get this folder here, Bodiplot GUI Master. Um, if you install that, at least on a Windows machine, you can um, essentially take that and, and you can extract it. Okay. Once you've done so, it'll create a folder called Bodiplot GUI Master. And then inside Bodiplot GUI Master, you go in there and you get another folder, Bodiplot GUI Master. All right, and essentially what I get here is, is a couple of different functions within MATLAB. So to get to those functions in MATLAB, all right, here's what my um, basic MATLAB installation looks like, which as I've said before to many of you, it probably looks a little bit different than yours. I close down a number of the other windows and just have the command window here. But what I can see at the top, and you'll be able to see somewhere in your MATLAB, is essentially the path that you're currently in. So right now I'm in the 2112 folder. So in this case, I'm going to change to the folder where that Bodiplot GUI is. So I go to Bodiplot GUI Master. All right, I'm going to change that folder. So I hit Select Folder. And if I want to see what items are in that folder, I hit LS, and I can see all of these files. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to open up this guy right here and I want to take a look and use him. So we're going to do that in a couple of steps potentially because he may not open up properly on your version of MATLAB um, because it's highly sort of version and, and machine dependent. So what I first have to do is create a transfer function. In this case I'm going to create a really simple uh, transfer function using the TF command. And if you don't know how to do that, there is another video on Canvas that shows you how to do it. So if you look at this, you should remember this is the numerator, this is the denominator. So I'm creating a very simple low pass filter. If I want to see it, I can type H and I can see I have one over S plus one is what I have created. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to call this function Bodiplot GUI. So I type in here Bodiplot GUI and then I type of H. So in other words, I pass it the transfer function I want to see, and I hit enter. All right, now up pops the GUI, and I'll notice that it's kind of cutting stuff off a little bit, and you know, the transfer function's sort of here, I can sort of see it. All right, so that doesn't look quite the way I want it to. So what I can do is I close it up, and I type guide, okay? Now what guide does is it allows me to open up a particular GUI. All right, so and to edit it. So there may be something listed here for you, there may not be. Regardless of whatever's listed, type click browse. All right. And right now I see Bodiplot GUI is one of the GUIs that I can open up. So I hit Bodiplot GUI. And there I have it. Okay, I can see it. This actually allows me to edit it to fit my machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this guy a little bit. And I see I have this black corner right here that I can kind of drag out. So I'm going to try to do that. And then what I'm going to try to do is select all of these guys and bring them down. Okay. And then try to select all of these and bring them down. And then I think up here you'll see the transfer function you can also bring down so you can see everything a lot more more clearly now okay and I'll even bring that guy down a little bit okay now what I do is I just click save and I can exit okay now I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna do Bodiplot GUI of H again and there I have it okay <clears throat> so Let's just look at this example I've got right here. So I did one over S plus one. So what this guy is doing is he's saying, okay, well, there's two elements to this particular transfer function. There's a constant, which in this case is just one. And then there is a real pole at, at minus one. So it tells me the elements that are included in this plot, basically the constant and then this real pole. And if I look at the legend here, I see that it's 
plotting a couple of different useful, interesting things for me, right? So it's plotting the constant one, which is at zero dB. So I see it going across right there in that, in that color. I also have the real pole at minus one, which I can't see in this particular case. And the reason I can't see it is because the total asymptote plot is on top of it. Now, in addition, I have this solid black line here, which is the exact Bode plot. So what I can see, of course, is that the exact Bode plot and the approximate are very close to each other as the farther away I am from the breakpoint. The closer I am to the breakpoint, the different they, more different they look. Okay. Now, I'm going to close it. I'm going to try a more complicated transfer function. A more complicated transfer function. So I'm going to put a zero at the origin. All right, so I type the TF command. I'm going to put a zero on the top, and then I'm going to put two poles on the bottom. So if I look at H, it looks like this. So I got a zero at the origin, and then I've got two poles. So I'm going to call Bode plot GUI again. So let's go, go up, call Bode plot GUI of H. And here's my graph, okay? So I see I got a couple of things that, that are here. All right, let's explore what's, what's going on. So if I look at this, you guys should be able to identify that this transfer function is going to have a constant in front, K. There's a zero at the origin, and then there are two poles. So essentially there are four different things that need to be plotted, right? We need to be able to see the effect of the constant. We need to be able to see the effect of the real pole at minus two, the real pole at minus one, and the zero at the origin. All of them are basically included here in this magnitude plot, okay? So if I look at this, I get the exact Bode plot. That's the solid black line again. I get the asymptote plot, which is the part that we ask you guys to generate, which is this sort of black dashed line. And then I can see each of the individual components. So it has this yellow zero value for reference only. That yellow going across there is basically the zero dB line for reference. So what I see is the constant 0.5, which if you calculate 20 log 10 of 0.5, you get negative 6 dB, right? So that guy is this dashed blue line. The real pole at minus, at, at minus 2 has a breakpoint at 2 radians per second. And you can see this line right here is two radians per second. So if I go up, I see that for the Bode plot of that real pole, what I have is that he is flat at zero dB, and then he starts dropping at 20 dB per decade. Got the same thing uh, in the light green here. The light green is for the real pole at minus one. I see that at one or 10 to the zero, that guy starts to fall. If I look at the zero at the origin, I see that guy rising, okay? The additive combination of all of those is this black dashed line. And if you want, you can actually remove these. So if I select an element here, each of those can be removed, right? So now I just have the zero at the origin. So let's say I wanted to sort of build this guy up one by one. I could say, well, let's bring in the real pole at negative two, the real pole at negative one. You gotta be careful, you just gotta click these once, right? So right now I'm excluding these two things. So now I include the real pole. So notice what it does, it changes the asymptote plot as I do that. And the reason it's changing the asymptote plot is what, what I see in the total asymptote plot is the sum of all of those. So let's just, let's just include nothing right off the bat. And then let's bring in the real pole at minus one. Again, I can't double click. It's one thing that's annoying. So we'll start with this, we'll start with the zero at the origin. There it is. Okay. Then I'll include the real pole at minus one. Now what I see is the real pole at minus one in the green. And the red here is the zero at the origin. The black dashed line is the sum of those two things. Then we bring in the real pole at minus two. Now the black dashed line is the sum of these three things. Then I add the constant and the whole thing shifts down. All right, so this is kind of a fun way to play with these things and to, and to see it. Now you may get some warnings and stuff because there may be some things that you do um, you know, that are a little bit strange, but, but generally speaking, most of the stuff that you guys look at um, will be um, a little bit 
easy in general and shouldn't really cause this guy to, to do anything strange. If you run into any issues, just let us know.